All right, so I want to talk about uh, servo timing and uh, to understand the data consumption of a servo. So let me talk about this a little bit closer. So if I open up my motion group and I go to properties and I understand that I am running a course rate update of two, okay? Um, the course rate update, that means the maximum uh, time that it's going to take for me to get the data back from the servo is two milliseconds. Okay. So with that said, if I'm trying to use the actual information, and this goes for any I.O. Um, it, as far as the I.O. for uh, my digital I.O. right here, the connection time is 20 milliseconds. If I try to use the uh, information any quicker than that, I'm only going to get the information back from that digital input or the digital output or any card. The default on that is generally 20 milliseconds. If you're trying to use that faster than, than 20 milliseconds, then you need to change the request packet intervals. Um, in this case, in servos though, uh, it's based upon your motion group. Okay, So it's the same principles apply. Timing is, again, a critical thing when it comes to all programming. Just understand the data behind it, and when you're requesting information from that said device, it we, that determines when you can use it, which is why I'm a huge fan of actually utilizing the uh, motion or the actual um, periodic task because in a periodic task, what you do is you understand the timing behind what you're trying to use. So. At this point, I've actually seen situations where the periodic task was really low and the RPIs were really high or the the uh, servo motion group was like set to 10 milliseconds and they were trying to use the, the information they were getting from the motion group uh, from all the servos. They were trying to use that within like, you know, like five seconds or five milliseconds or stuff like that. And that just won't work because you're counterproductive. You're you're working against yourself. Your your data behind the timing, right? The timing is everything in, in programming whatsoever. Uh, but and some people just like to use continuous tasks, which there's nothing against continuous tasks. But when it comes to certain things and certain protocols, like especially with servos, the timing uh, should be always, in my opinion. Uh, in periodic task um, and and just about programming all together periodic tasks is just going to help you but understanding and with that understanding that saying that's as quick as you're going to get it now there are exceptions where you're saying okay am I using an L6 processor am I using an L7 processor or am I using an L8 uh, this day and age the L6 is slower uh, the L7 is a, is a little bit faster than the L, uh, L6 and the L8 is far superior. Uh, now, this does actually coincide again to timing and requested packs for intervals. You see, I have a very small program. Uh, it takes me very small, small amount of time to actually cycle through it. Uh, but it, when it comes down to the information that I'm trying to use from the servo, um, even when I make a trend, okay, so even, even if I make this trend right here, if I go into trend properties, if I'm coming in trying to request my information uh, faster than I can actually get it, like in this case, I'm, I'm getting the servo position. Um, I'm basically, like in my sampling, I have it at two milliseconds. So I'm actually requesting that exactly like my servo or my motion group is actually giving me the information. Um, now, sometimes, generally speaking, you want to be a little bit slower like you would want to be one and a half times slower so that you can get the proper information. But in this situation, I only have one thing running. So it's very easy for me to accomplish this goal. Um, and my, I am running an L7 processor, which is a pretty fast and pretty strong processor. But I do want you to understand timing and the understanding behind timing when you're programming. Because again, there's a huge question. I get a lot of questions about servos and why they're not working properly or why they're not tracking data properly and why they're not doing things uh, like they're supposed to do in the real world and it's always related back to timing so understand the timing behind all of your task and what you're trying to do and and trying to use so if i can say anything uh, about servos and about really kind of any information that you're trying to get from any IO device, it's the timing.
right? So don't try to use the data before you're actually trying to consume the data and you're actually getting the data from the said device. In this case, it would be a servo, right? We're, we're really focused on servos because that's where I get most of my questions about, but I wanted to actually make a video talking about that because a lot of people have uh, and do struggle with this, right? So um, with that said, hopefully you learned a lot on that video. Um, sorry it wasn't like some big spectacular thing. It was just me talking and kind of showing you a little bit of stuff. But uh, with that said, hopefully you learned a lot on that video. See you guys on the next one.